Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I had a subscriber ask a question, which I will flip in here for you guys. He wants to know, Jason, what are your thoughts on reverse pyramid training? Now some of you guys asked, Jason, why do you wear that plus five hat of weaponsmithing? Because it makes me look like a goddamn sexual Tyrannosaurus. Bonus points for anyone who knows the reference. I haven't said that in a few days, um, which means about 20 videos. So, uh, what are my thoughts on reverse pyramid training? I really don't have any thoughts on reverse pyramid training. I don't think about it at all. All right, so guys, that's the end of the video. I hope it's been informative, and uh, I will talk to you guys next time. All right, joking aside. Um, no, I don't think reverse pyramid training is that great, and that's based upon a lot of reasons. Now, a lot of people will say, but Jason, Arnold Schwarzenegger did reverse pyramid training. Who are you? to argue with the great Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know what guys? Lots of champions have done a lot of stupid stuff that was actually not efficient, probably not the best thing for them to do, but they did enough other stuff right and just trained hard enough and were genetically gifted enough and had enough raw talent in what they did that they became champions anyways doesn't mean that everything that they did was right and many a champion after they retired have come back and said you know I could have done things differently and probably had gotten better results and uh, by the way Arnold Schwarzenegger has said those exact words I believe uh, in an interview before he actually has admitted later his training wasn't perfect he might have done stuff differently if you look back in retrospect so even the great Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> has argued with himself now that being said, what are the issues with it? Uh, a number of issues. Number one, people who are really trying to maximize their, their gains, which isn't always easy to do. Anybody can train hard and make good gains, all right? Uh, and not everyone needs to maximize their gains. I want people to understand that when I make a statement like that. Maximizing your gains actually isn't that important outside of a competitive environment. Are you making good gains? Are you making consistent gains? Are you making consistent progress towards your goals? If so, hey, that's fucking fantastic. Not everyone needs to maximize their gains, so don't take this the wrong way. Uh, most of the available data that I've seen out there, and again, some top experts in the field, again, refer back to Dr. Mike Isriatel, uh, competitive bodybuilder, competitive jiu-jitsu uh, fighter, professor of exercise science. Um, he is an advocate of not mixing rep ranges. He's one of many. I just use him as an example. You can look up what he says about it. Uh, most experts in the field are not a big fan of mixing rep ranges in the same training session. The reason being is that it interferes you with your recovery from training session to training session. Meaning, uh, when you're focusing on gaining strength through mechanical tension, your nervous system needs time to recover from the really heavy lifts, and if it doesn't recover, it will sometimes interfere um, with your ability to lift heavy again. Now, metabolic fatigue from doing higher reps can do the same thing. You need more recovery time sometimes when you're training the same system too close together. What happens when you end up mixing rep ranges, um, you have some problems with the, the cross-training effect, meaning Sometimes when you train a different training stimulus too close together, generally like in the same day or the same training session, you undo some of the previous training stimulus if the other one trains a different performance component, particularly in the same uh, part of the peripheral nervous system or a different part of the, the muscular system. It can change some of it, uh, meaning that's why you don't do cardio, large amounts of cardio immediately after you weight lift. Uh, same thing with some of the metabolic fatigue What do you do from doing higher reps after doing lower reps. What ends up happening is, is something similar to that. What ends up happening is, of course, you can't actually maximize on anything. Uh, meaning, you, you won't train as much workload with the heavier weight that you would want to gain maximum strength from that training session. And you won't be able to do enough metabolic work with the higher reps because you fatigued yourself from the heavier work to really get the most metabolic fatigue. So meaning from a training session, you tend to do better uh, with an undulating or concurrent style training system, which means you have different days 
for different rep ranges. So what you end up happening, let's say over the course of a, a six week period, you will tend to get better at both, meaning your, your three rep max or your five rep max will go up more in a six week period of time. And so we'll say your 12 rep max if you split them up into different days, meaning you do your three to five rep sets on one day for a given exercise or body part, and then do, you do your 12 to 15 rep sets on a different day. You don't run them on the same day. You tend to get better at both more over a six week period of time. Well, as most of you probably know, progressive overload is the key to muscle growth. Not just strength, but muscle, muscle gains. So if you get stronger at your five rep sets and your 12 rep sets, you gain more strength on both, you're going to tend to stimulate more muscle mass growth. What ends up happening is that, <clears throat> again, when you do mixed rep ranges in the same session, which reverse pyramid training is, you tend to do less heavy work that day. Less heavy work means less adaptation on the heavy sets. Uh, as far as working in that rep range, gaining that strength. And again, because you fatigue your uh, peripheral nervous system and upper threshold fibers a bit more by doing the heavy work first, you're also not as good at doing the higher reps later. Uh, and ultimately, you end up with less total metabolic fatigue. Whereas if you had a whole workout where you focus just on the heavy weight, the whole workout where you just focus on those, it tends to run better. And your recovery between them tends to run better when you stagger, which lets you train more frequently. More frequent training that you actually recover from. That's the caveat. More frequent training that you actually recover from usually equals more progress. Uh, reverse pyramid training is the exact opposite of that. You're mixing multiple rep ranges in the same exercise in the same day. It's just not the best way to get good results. Now, a lot of people will do it also for workout convenience of they'll do almost a drop set and call that reverse pyramid training. That's a little bit different. Here's, here's what basically what we know. Uh, we've studied workload density. And by we, I don't mean me personally. People always freak out about that. No, I didn't stick biopsy needles in anyone. But I've certainly taken my time reading the studies and reading the data and reading the white papers. And the data that other people, such as Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, have done Again, his, his area of expertise is muscle hypertrophy, if he's obsessed with it. That's what his PhD is in, and he does a lot of studies on it. He's obsessed with it. That's his passion. It's basically Dr. Gaines. Uh, has suggested that if your rest intervals are so short that you have to reduce the weight between sets, you stimulate less muscle growth. Meaning, uh, if you keep the rest periods long enough that you can use the same weight for multiple sets, you gain more muscle from those multiple sets. If the brakes are so short that you're forced to use a lighter weight, which is again, reverse pyramid trading, you're dropping the weight down, you tend to gain a little less muscle mass. Not the best way to go. I would suggest instead for people who want to get in and out quick, they want those really short breaks because so they're trying to induce a bunch of workload and metabolic fatigue, I would recommend rest pause training instead. Um, for people who want an enormous amount of workload density, they want to try to get some of the benefits of doing multiple sets from doing one set, just an extended set, which is what you're trying to do there. Um, I think rest pause stimulates more muscle growth, more strength, and I think it inhibits your recovery less than doing a drop set would. And so a lot of guys treat uh, reverse pyramid training like a drop set. Um, and that's just kind of my opinion based upon observations over the years. So take that one for what it's worth as far as that goes with the drop sets. Uh, there are people who disagree with me on that, and that's okay. That's my opinion based upon my observation of lifters over the years and my understanding of the human body. I don't think that one has been fully studied enough uh, to draw conclusions on, uh, but it's what I think is generally going on there. It's the way I would go. So when you really look at it, reverse pyramid training is kind of a trendy thing, but the problem you run into with it is that it's not really ideal for mo what most people are trying to do because people are either doing it to try to mix rep ranges in the same workout to try to get the best of both worlds. You know, they're like, I want to get the best of all of it. I want to get the benefits of five rep sets, uh, 10 rep sets, 15 rep sets all from one workout. And while that sounds good in theory, it doesn't really pan out. Uh, again, all the data we have out there suggests it doesn't. And that's the reason we have periodization. And for people who want to gain those benefits from the same week, 
not just the same uh, workout. Uh, that's why we have concurrent style training that's out there. Undulating periodization, concurrent periodization, basically methods to where you train different rep ranges within the same week, but you split them up on different days. People seem to respond better to that. And again, when it comes to the whole doing it as a drop set, which is again, many people's definition of reverse pyramid training, they're taking 30 or 60 seconds or less between them. Uh, again, all the experts out there who've studied it and done actual studies in humans have found uh, dropping weight on later sets uh, produces less gains in muscle mass. Is it dramatically less? No, but it's a little less and you're sitting there trying to do multiple sets in the hopes of gaining more muscle. But the truth is that's really not going to help you gain more muscle. Uh, you're better off waiting a little longer and trying to lift the same weight again for a similar number of reps. Uh, again, usually produces better results in all the studies we've seen because ultimately more tension involved. You have more tension along with the benefit of the metabolic fatigue of doing the extra sets. Um, that's kind of getting the best of both worlds. That works out better in the long term because uh, again, those are the two biggest factors in your training that determine muscle growth is tension and fatigue. And again, tension is all about weight, fatigue is all about workload. You're getting more of both if you do it that way. So really, uh, what do I think of reverse pyramid training? I'm not a fan. Um, I don't think it's the best way for anyone's goals that I can think of off the top of my head. But you know what? If you enjoy training that way and it makes you happy, then so be it. Do what makes you happy. As long as you understand that what makes you happy may not give you the best results. But if you really, really enjoy doing it, you're going to be more consistent with it. And you know what gives you the best results? Consistency. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.